In this tutorial, I will show you everything you need to know about deployments, whether you want to manage your local projects or a large production environment, prepare for an interview or pass your certification exam. You will have a perfect understanding of deployments and you will be able to work with them on the terminal. We will cover the following. How to create and update deployments. How the deployment relates to replica sets and pods. How to roll back and pause a deployment. And finally, we will see how we can optimize the deployment strategy. Let's start. So, what are Kubernetes deployments and why do we need them? A Kubernetes deployment allows you to manage your workloads in a declarative way. By workload, we mean anything you might want to run on production or any other environment. It could be a microservice written in Golang or Java, for instance. By declarative, we mean that we define the desired state of the deployment in a manifest file. It could be YAML or JSON. And then it's Kubernetes that makes the hard work to achieve the desired state. But why do we need them? Imagine I have a microservice named cat. I can tell Kubernetes that I want one instance, two instances, three instances, or 1000 instances. And I can do that with just one command line. Now, before we jump on the terminal, let's have a look at the manifest. When we declare a deployment manifest, we are actually defining three things. The pod template, which is what you want to deploy. The replica set, which means how many instances of that pod you want to deploy. And the deployment strategy, which means how you want to create and update your deployment. In this case, since we are not defining any strategy, Kubernetes will apply the rolling update, which is the default. This is a very important concept, often overlooked. These are actual resources that Kubernetes is going to create when you apply this manifest. In this case, this file will result in one deployment resource, one replica set resource, and three pods. Another important concept is the selector. Its labels are used to associate a deployment to its replica sets. Don't worry if this sounds confusing. It will become clearer when we work with these resources on the terminal. Let's start working with them and create our first deployment. I'm going to create a deployment named Sample, which launches three replicas of Nginx. Rather than issuing the command, I save the output as YAML in a file using the dry run and output flags. I could modify the manifest before applying it if I wish. However, Let's keep it as it is for now. Once a deployment is created, I can use the kubectl rollout status command to check whether it completed successfully or not. Now we are going to see that, as we anticipated, defining a deployment is actually creating a replica set. And we can see the name of the created replica set highlighted on screen. The replica set is in turn creating the replicas, which are our pods. These resources are linked through label selectors. In this case, it is app equals sample. If we move forward, we can use kubectl to get our deployment and replica set. I'm going to use the same selector with the label flag. We notice something interesting immediately. The replica set has an additional label named pod template hash. This label is created automatically by hashing the pod template and it is used to distinguish different replica sets belonging to the same deployment. Yes, you heard well. A deployment can be linked to multiple replica sets. At this point in time, we are seeing one replica set because we have just created our deployment. Every time we update the deployment's pod template, a new replica set is created with a different pod template hash. We will see this very soon. The last thing to note is that the pod template hash label is also part of the replica set and pod's name, so they can be easily correlated even without printing the labels. It is very important that you choose the deployment selector on creation. 
Once you create that deployment, you cannot modify the selector anymore. It is also important that you never modify the replica sets, but you interact exclusively with the deployment resource. And let Kubernetes do the rest. Now we are going to learn about rollout history and revision numbers. We can see the deployment history using the rollout history command. Currently, we just created our deployment, so we listed only one revision with no change calls. To add the change calls, we can use the annotation kubernetes.io slash change dash calls. I'm going to set it as initial deployment. Better. Now I'm going to show you that scaling up and down a deployment does not change its revision number because it does not affect the pod template. Let's increase the number of replicas to 10. We check the history and we still see one revision. I will scale it back to three replicas. Let's make a change to the pod template now. We are going to edit the deployment. I update immediately the change calls, otherwise I forget. I decided to switch the image version to Alpine Slim. Once the rollout completes, we check the history and we can verify that this time a new revision was created. When we list the replica sets, we can see two entries. A new replica set was created with a different pod template hash, as expected. All its pods are active. We created and updated that deployment and we also mastered the concept of revision in the rollout history. Now we go a step further and we try to deal with issues during a deployment. I will create a broken revision, so we will fail the deployment. This way I can show you how I can roll it back to a working revision. Let's start. I added disassembled deployment again by setting the image version to something that does not exist. This is going to break our rollout. The new revision is recorded, but the rollout is hanging and not completing. We list the replica sets and we notice something interesting. A new replica set has been created. It is trying to spawn a new pod, but it is not marked as ready. We obviously know the reason. The image does not exist. The previous replica set is still active. This is because we had defined a rolling update strategy. Later on, I will show you how we can fine-tune this strategy. But let's move on for now. We know this deployment will never succeed, so we want to roll it back. All it takes is using the kubectl rollout undo command on our deployment. This is going to revert the deployment to the previous revision. If we look at the rollout history, we see that a new revision has been created. However, the total count is still 3. The reason is that Kubernetes has just used revision number 2 and promoted it to number 4. We can see the same behavior mirrored in the replica sets. We also have the ability to roll back to a specific revision number using the to revision flag. In this case, I set it to revision 1. If we check the rollout history, revision 1 has been promoted to 5 as expected. We have already covered a lot of ground, but we are not done yet. In this section, we are going to pause and unpause deployment, and we will focus on what happens when we update a deployment while it's paused. We use the kubectl rollout pause command on our sample deployment, and we check the rollout history. We can see we have only three revisions. We edit the deployment and change the image version to pair. We save and check the rollout history again. We still have only three revisions. If we check the status of the rollout, it is effectively paused and not updating any replica. Let's edit the deployment a second time. And this time we set the image version to stable. We check the rollout history and we still find three revisions. If we describe the deployment, we can see one of the conditions stating that the deployment is paused. It's time to unpause it. Let's unpause the rollout with the resume command. We check the history one last time and we can see a fourth revision was created with number 6. The replica sets mirror this behavior as well. 
Notice how the first deployment edit we did was completely ignored. This makes pausing deployments useful if we want to do multiple modifications to the deployment without affecting the live replica set. The last thing we need to do is experiment a bit with deployment strategies. Kubernetes supports out of the box the rolling update and the recreate, but it is also possible to perform canary deployments. Before we go on the terminal, let's try to understand what these strategies are. In a rolling update, when a new revision is created, Kubernetes is going to create new pods and delete old ones progressively, according to the max surge and max unavailable parameters we specify in the strategy. In the recreate strategies, all pods are killed before new ones are spawned. Finally, in a canary deployment, we actually create two different deployments with different tracks labels, and we keep them running concurrently. We create a new deployment with 10 replicas and wait for the rollout to complete. We now modify the deployment. We are going to set max surge to 50%, which means 5 replicas out of 10, and max unavailable to 10%, which means 1 replica out of 10. I'm also setting the image version to a non-existent one, so we can see how the rolling update behaves in this scenario. As you can see, Kubernetes killed only 10% of the old running replicas. In fact, we have 9 running pods with the old pod template hash. It also attempted the creation of 6 new pods. This is because we set the max search to 50. 5 pods on top of the 10 replicas comes 15 pods, and that brings the total number of pods associated with this deployment to 15, as expected. Let's create another deployment. I save it to file and update manually the strategy, setting the type to recreate. We wait for the rollout to complete, and we create a new revision, breaking the deployment as usual with a non-existing image. As you can see this time, all the LT pods belonging to the old replica set have gone. You should use the recreate strategy with caution, as a wrong deployment update will leave your system without the desired component. I can imagine this strategy being useful mostly for singletons or applications that cannot run in parallel. If you have any other use cases in mind for the recreate strategy, please leave a comment in the section below. I would really appreciate it. The last strategy we will learn is the canary deployment. Strictly speaking, this is not a strategy supported by the Kubernetes deployment out of the box, but we can achieve it by defining multiple labels. I will create two deployments. Both deployments will have the same app label, but different track label. I named the first deployment sample and set the track label to stable, while I named the second deployment sample canary and I set the track label to Canary. If I list the deployments, replica sets and pods, I can see that the two deployments are running in parallel. I can then use the scale command to switch the load on the Canary or the stable track, however I prefer. And this is the conclusion of the video. By now you should have an advanced knowledge of the deployment resource and how it works in Kubernetes. All it remains to do is for you to experiment and practice on your own. If you don't have a Kubernetes installation yet, watch my video on how to install and learn Kubernetes in just 10 minutes. As usual, I ask you to like the video, to subscribe to the channel and to share the video with your colleagues or friends. This is what motivates me to produce more of this content. Feel also free to leave any comment in the section below. See you next time.